Your first step is to think about what your topic or theme is going to be for your puzzle. My theme is Valentine's Day. The next step would be to think about how many words you would want in your puzzle, how long you want those words to be, and creating that list of words. Think about how big you want your puzzle to be on your page if you want it to have a lot of words or a lot of long words. Typically your letter size or the size of your letters would have to be smaller. If you have less words, your puzzle can be larger. It's definitely up to you. And how many other components you want on the page, such as a title, clip bar, a border, etc. Also think about the length of your words. How long do you want the length of the words to be? Because again, you're gonna have to insert those words into your puzzle, so you wanna make sure there's enough room. I typically go between 12 and 15 or 16 letters in a word, and then I usually have 10 to 15 words in a puzzle. You can have more, you can have less, it's definitely up to you. And then coming up with your list of words. Based on your topic or theme, you can look for words on Google, you can use AI, things like ChatGPT to search for words. And then the third way is just coming up with the list of words yourself. So specifically if it's about something you're teaching or something you're more knowledgeable about, you can definitely come up with the list of words on your own. Now after you complete those first few steps, once you're ready to create your puzzle in Google slides what you're going to do is open up a new presentation and we're going to set up this page so first thing i want to do is get rid of the themes on the side then go up to the ribbon on top and click layout to make my screen or my slides blank next i'm going to change the dimensions of the page i'm going to go over to file and then go down to print setup and hit this drop down menu and click on custom and the first space I'm going to type in 8.5, the second space I'm going to type in 11 and then hit apply. So it looks like this. Now that I have my page, I'm going to kind of work from top to bottom on creating my page. So I'm recreating this Valentine's Day word search puzzle. And I like to start by making the answer page first. I like to add in all the components and then for my main page, I just like take the color away and delete some of the components that I don't want on the main puzzle. So I'm gonna start with the border, go to the title and just move my way down the puzzle. You don't have to go in that order, that's just one way that I like to go in. So to create my border, I'm gonna go over to shape and I'm gonna click on the rectangle and then kinda of come down here. So there's the border, I'm gonna make sure that the fill is transparent, then I'm gonna go and change the border color. So because it's Valentine's Day, I wanna I want a like lighter color. Um, some puzzles, if it's black and white, I would just go with black. But here I'm gonna choose purple and then I'm going to make it a size three. Next, I'm going to add my title. So I'm gonna go back to my first page and check out that title. So it's Valentine's Day word search. I have it at Nunito, size 30, bold, and it's red. I can just copy it over, but I wanna show you how to create that title. So we're gonna go up to the ribbon where it has T for text box, and then we're gonna create that in the middle. And I'm gonna change the font now. Nito bold, I want it to be a size 30, I want it to be red, and I need it to be aligned to the middle. So let's type that in now. Then I'll just stretch out the text box so that it fits. and move it around if you need to, to make those adjustments and center it. So at this point, looking at my original, I have two pieces of clip art on the side. You can insert your clip art now if you want that, or you can wait until the puzzle's done and add those at the end. So that's an optional piece, and you can include that now if you would like, or wait to wait until your puzzle page is more complete. 
Also, because this is going to be my answer page, I'm going to type in answers right below. So I'm just going to select my title and then on my keyboard, hit Command D or Control D to duplicate it. And then I'm going to change the word to answers and adjust the text size. Go up a little bit and the color. And I'm going to adjust the text box and then center it and move it up. All right, so we have our title, we have our insert and answers text. Next, we're going to go to creating our puzzle, inserting a table to create the puzzle. So you should already have your list of words. You can have them written down in a book or you can write them on the screen or have them written somewhere else. Okay, so. Here's where you want to start to think about the word that you're going to use in your table. So by now you should have decided what's the longest length of a word that you want in your puzzle. Or I would choose the number of rows and columns that are going to be in my table based on the longest word on my list. Here's the list of words that I use. One tip is to put your words in alphabetical order if you want, or you can leave them or you can put them in order based on the number of letters in the word or any other order that makes sense to you, or you can just make them random. I like to put mine in alphabetical order. I can see the longest word or the word with the most letters is sweetheart. 10 letters in the word. I can do 11 columns and 11 rows. I'm actually going to go up to 12. I just like to have at least 12 typically. Next, we're going to go up to insert and go to table. And you're going to choose the number of rows and columns that you want for your puzzle. All right, so I have 12 by 12. And then you're just going to adjust your table based on how you want it positioned on your page, how large you want the rows to look, how wide. Remember, you're going to add words on the bottom of your page, or you can rearrange this where your words are on the side and maybe your table is like on the right side and your words on the left. That's definitely up to you. That would be cool to see. But I'm going to have my words at the bottom, so I'm going to adjust this a little bit more and then center it on the page. All right, so I like that there. I'm not worried about the color or the thickness of the lines for my table because I'm going to get rid of the lines after all the letters are inserted. But some puzzles include the lines on their table. So if that's something you want, you would want to format the lines in your table to look the way that you want them to look. Before I add in my letters, I'm going to format what's going to happen inside of the table. So I'm going to select the entire table. I'm going to change it to the font that I want. I want Roboto bold. I want them to be, um, I want each letter to be a size 20. And I want the font colors fine as black. Let me make sure it's black. I want them to be centered in each cell and in the middle. And then on my keyboard, I'm just going to hit the caps lock button so that all my letters are capitalized. Next, we're going to type in the list of words. And one tip is to start with your longest word and place that first and go from there and go to the next longest word and just go down from there and then place your words where they make sense. You can place your words anywhere on the puzzle. You, you can place the words in any direction, forward, backwards, up, down, diagonal, going to the left, diagonal, going to the right, diagonal, going down. Any way that you want, they can be connected or not connected or a mixture of the two. So I'm going to place my words in now. As I add words, I also like to cross them off my list so I know that I've used them.
sometimes if you're as you're adding in your words and you're finding every word is not going to fit you may need to rearrange your words or even start over now I have my list of words added into my puzzle so next I'm going to highlight or color code or outline the words so that they'll stand out amongst the other random letters that I'm going to add in since it's a Valentine's Day theme, I'm going to add in colors based on that theme. Go up to the ribbon, find fill color, and then select the color that you want for the fill. I like to do all of the words that are going in the same direction, the same fill color. All my words that are going across or that are horizontal, I'm going to fill in the same color. All right, next I'm gonna fill in the words that I have going vertically. I'm gonna choose a light pink for that. And some of your letters may, because you're using a letter for more than one word, one of the colors is gonna color over the original fill colors, and that's okay, that's perfectly fine. Last, I'm going to add the fill color for the words that are going diagonally. All right, so we have them all color coded and I'm gonna also add in an outline. So to add your outline, you're going to select the cells that your word is in and then click the drop down arrow that's like in the corner there and then select what part of the cells do you want to have outlined. So I want not all of them because that'll include the inside lines here. I just want the top, the left side of the first cell, the bottom of all of them and the right side of the last cell. So that's this outside outer border. So that's selected. And I'm going to go up here and I'm going to select three as the borderline and make the line black just like that. Actually before I do that, before I do the rest of them, I want to get rid of these inside lines and the outside lines. So we're going to select the entire table now that we have our words. You can do this before or after adding in your other letters. So I'm going to select the entire table and hit the Drop down arrow in the top right corner. And this time I'm going to select all borders and I'm going to go to border color and make them transparent so that we can't see them. So now I'm going to add in those, the outlines for each word on the outside border. And I'm going to, I'm actually gonna make it a two. Yeah, two is fine for me. So I'm going to do that for all of the words. All right, we have all of our words highlighted and outlined on our page. We took away the lines from the other parts of the table. 
Next, we're going to be filling in with our random letters around our specific words that we're going to have hidden in the puzzle. If this video is helpful to you so far, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. Now, once you select inside of the table, you can see where everything is. You can see the spaces that need word, need letters. So I like to just pick any letters on the keypad and type them in. You can go down, up, around, however you want. Just fill in those empty spaces and don't forget your vowels. And sometimes you can double or triple the letters if you want. Next, we're going to add in our word list at the bottom of our page. So I'm going to insert another table. And because I have 15 words, I'm going to make five rows of three words. So I need five columns and three rows. And I'm going to move that table down to the bottom of the page. Next, I'm going to add in the format that I want for the font, the size, the position of the words in the table. Next, I'm going to just type the words into the table. I do not want the words to be capitalize, but you can have that if you like. All right, and then we're gonna get rid of the lines on the table the same way we did the puzzle, the table for the puzzle. Select all of them and make the lines transparent. All right, now that you have your list of words here, you don't really need this list on the side. You can leave it or get rid of it by deleting it. So now that you have pretty much everything on your page, if you did not add in any clip art before, now is the time that you can add in clip art where you want it to be on the screen and make any adjustments to color or text size or position on the screen if you want your table to move up or down. So I am going to add in clip art here. You can search and go to insert image. You can search the web and look for clip art from Google. So like if I want heart, you can just click that in and you can select a heart that you want. And go to insert and adjust the size and place the clip art where you want it to go. If you want to duplicate that, I would select the image, hit Command or Control D on your keypad, and then duplicate it. So you can do that. I'm another option is to use clip art that you already have saved on your computer or that you purchased and downloaded to your computer. So that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to go to Insert Image and then go to Upload from Computer. I'm going to copy in the were the images that I used on my original page. One thing I did forget is directions. I've created some word search puzzles where I put no directions on there, but sometimes I do put directions on there. So it depends on your audience who's gonna be using the word search puzzle and you can put them there or not put them there if you want. So I'm gonna do something simple. So I would just take this same text box and Hit Command D to duplicate it and bring it down here. Stretch it out. All 
All right, it looks good to me. Now we're going to create our main version. So over on the side, you're gonna duplicate this. You can right click and hit duplicate or Command D or Control D to duplicate your page. And then I'm gonna select the one on top to make this the main page. So I don't want any, first I don't want any answers to be here. So I'm gonna take away that text and then I'm going to select all of the spaces inside of the table. I'm going to go over to my fill and make it all transparent. And I'm going to go over to the line. Actually, I'm going to select, make sure I select, yeah, everything, yeah, select all of the cells and go up to my border and hit transparent as well. So there's our main page and you have your answer page. You can stop here. I also like to include a black and white version of both or a black line version. So I'm going to duplicate the main puzzle and just change everything that I have in color to black. That includes my border and even my pieces of clip art. You might have clip art that has a black and white version or a black line version, or you can go to format options and then hit recolor and hit the drop down and then look at the options that they have there to see what you like. I'm going to go with this one and do the same thing here. And there's your black and white version. And then for your black and white answer page, I'm gonna duplicate that page, Command D. And I'm gonna just move it to the bottom, move the black and white main one up. So here, I'm gonna do the same thing at the top with the color. We're gonna change this to black. All of this to black. Select both of my hearts and change the color. Change the word list to black. Change my border to black. Or you can even change it to like a dark gray. Just want it to match your original post up, uh, your original, your main puzzle that's black and white. And then on the inside, I'm gonna get rid of the color, but I'm gonna leave the outline to show where the answers are. So we're gonna to go to fill and then hit transparent, but all of the outline is still remaining. So there is your word search puzzle made in Google Slides.